All right, welcome back. This is M Dog, and just want to show you uh, another quick video. We've, <laughs> you see, I'm at winding, but this is not the uh, the beginner series that we've been doing leveling up um, uh, at winding. This is actually going to be for a little higher level players. This video is really going to focus on bait fish. Uh, so if you are into bottom fishing, you will uh, you will probably know this. But eventually, you unlock the ability to use a bait fish bottom rig which if you look at this rod here you'll see i have it set up as a bait fish rig of course you know you change it by clicking on the change button here change it to bait fish the main difference with this is you're going to use a bait fish hook and you're actually going to put uh, live fish on it that you have caught now the issue of course is that they do spoil over time and if you look down in the bait fish i have a few left some are fresh some are not uh, there are fish in the game that will still um, eventually will bite on fish that aren't fresh, uh, but I think you do have more success putting the fresh fish in. Now, I wanted to show you this spot, and many of you may already know about it, which that's fine. Move on. But if you don't know about this spot, uh, it's one of the spots in the game, which there are many, that I think is a really good place to um, catch a lot of bait fish in a small amount of time and have a little fun while doing it. You can see here on the winding map where we are, basically at the end of this 3.5 meter hole that runs straight down the main portion of winding here. And we are gonna be using uh, telescopic rods. If you are purchasing rods to do this, I actually like the blue TL16 rods, which are the very beginner rods. I like those the best in this scenario, but because I did have one linear telescopic rod 20, I have used it as well. So let's take a look. Again, this is for higher level players. Uh, there certainly are ways you could do this without the expensive line, but man, is this fun using this pure fluorocarbon 3.6 kilo, eight pound line. Uh, I'm using three different bobbers uh, or floats, which I'll show you the reason why I'm having variety in a minute. The smallest hooks, 24. This is from the Berserker Rage series, the S2, S24. And then we're going to be trying out bloodworms, maggots, and worms, just to give you a little example of, uh, of what you might catch here. Now, before we get started, let me say that full credit is due. Uh, I actually first saw this on someone else's stream. I believe it was FM Scout. Anyway, there was an official um, competition that happened, and it was for the uh, most weight in gudgeon sort of a creative competition that happened. And so I saw that a lot of people were fishing in this spot. Well, not only for targeting gudgeon, but you get all kinds of different bait fish, at least three or four different species here. And the bite rate is pretty nice as well. So I'm ending up at about 85 centimeters on depth. We are literally just gonna cast about 50 to 60% out right in front of us. And this is the reason why I've got different colored floats. And I still will get confused on which is which. I put my bright neon top there right in the middle. In fact, you might even get different styles of floats to help you keep it straight. But you just put them out there and see, we've already got a bite on, on rod one. Um, and so this will be a good way to catch, uh, just catch a high quantity of fish. Many of them will end up being in the bait fish category, uh, things that you can turn into bait fish, which is kind of nice. The other thing that I have, um, I have found is this is one of those spots where you can make a dent if you're trying to level up float fishing. If you're like me, you might have leveled it up early when you first started playing the game, but maybe took a break of it, break, break from it since then. Oh, we missed that one, didn't we? And I will tell you, these are in the wrong order. I will try to make this work. So typically, the float that I have on rod three right now, you can see on the far end there, I usually have that on rod two so that I can better tell them apart. That one just stands out to me because of how bright and yellow the top is. So I like to have that one in the middle. But anyway, so there's a bleak. But we'll, So I'm just going to do this for a couple minutes here just to give you an example. I, uh, I showed you that I've got different bait zone when i have done this i have ended up really enjoying actually just using um the same bait all the way across that being the blood worms 
because it seems to me that maybe that one catches the highest percentage of gudgeon. And I've been fishing at Cory with these bait fish, and I have found that gudgeon just does particularly well there, along with uh, I really liked white bream, which you're not going to catch in this spot, uh, and bleak at Cory, which you can catch in this spot, as well as there's one more white bream, bleak. I can't remember what the fourth one is. Gudgeon and I'll have to think about it. Um, so I've missed a lot of these. Hopefully we'll start getting a little higher percentage. But we're using the really small hooks, like I said, the 24. I have thought about going up to 22, um, especially if you, for some reason, were wanting to just get maybe more markers. So if you're not here for bait fish, but you're here to just try to level up your floating and you might as well, you know, catch as many markers as you can so that you're getting a little bit of silver, getting some of those cafe orders. You might try 22 or even 20. There's a gudgeon. And you see our float fishing. Our float fishing, I think yesterday might have been at 25 point something, something like that. Maybe 30 something. I don't know. But in just a little bit of time, we've definitely seen some significant points up on float fishing. Obviously, having it this low, you're going to get point ups pretty frequently. But um, it's been nice in terms of if I ever did want to try to make a run at match rods this would definitely be one of the spots i might consider coming like i said there are other spots both for bait fish and for high quantity of fish places uh, on old berg even mosquito has some places that you could do this same type of thing but i've really enjoyed targeting uh bleak and gudgeon there's another bleak um especially the gudgeon i ended up um in just a little while of fishing here ended up with uh um, almost 20 gudgeon bait fish and that was you know with not much time investment so it uh, it and that turned into a lot of fun bait fish fishing experiences on quarry as well so for me at least it is a fun and worthwhile exercise to do this see I am used to having that other one on rod too it actually just messed me up there because I was trying to pull the other one we got a little bit lucky that we still caught the fish on three but on yeah on the other one but and this is just your basic strategy here i keep kind of throwing them up river a little bit so that they'll float down some so we missed that one and i miss a lot you know it just happens float fishing for me is uh just a kind of can be a frustrating experience but when the bite rate is this high Pulling hooks out of the fish mouth here and there isn't as big a deal. And I'm sure if I spent more time doing it, I would get more and more used to the timing of doing this. So that the chances of that happening decrease a little bit. I think having the really nice uh, small line, the fluorocarbon line, it likely helps with increasing the bite rate a little bit. Although, uh, if you are a, a lower level player and wanted to do this, I think it would still be really good, even with just, you know, s just really light mono line. Um, I don't think you need to use a leader here, not not at winding. So uh, either way, I think you could have the same result, but it may just be a little better with the nice hooks, giving you that little bit of an edge and also the bite rate from that fluorocarbon line. One thing I haven't tried that you, I guess you could, is you could try, you know, if you didn't want to purchase the light line. See, I'm, okay, hold on. We're going to fix this. Uh, you could try purchasing the, um, in, instead of getting the line, you could try getting the um, really small leaders and seeing if that works. It just... You know, if you're going to do a lot of bait fish, in my opinion, you're going to want this kind of setup so that you can have the best chance of possible of just being as effective as possible. So now we have the the right float in the middle position. I'm not sure how that got messed up from yesterday, uh, unless I put them on the on the quick slot bar in a different order or something. But and it happens so quick, it's actually hard for me to keep track of like, okay, which species am i catching on um on the maggots more or the worm i just know that yesterday using all blood worm 
it seemed like it was a really nice percentage of gudgeon. Um, maggots might be getting more bleak than I got yesterday. I didn't use maggots at all yesterday. I did use, try worms for a while. And again, ended up preferring the blood worms only, but the worms did really good too. All the all three of these baits are going to get you a really nice um, bite rate. There's a gudgeon. I'm kind of liking how the maggots are doing here. It's possible that I might, instead of doing worms and blood worms, I might do two blood worms and one maggots in the future, based on what I've seen here doing this today. Yeah, maggots are getting a lot of bleak and a little bit of gudgeon. That's a good that's a good thing for sure. With the bite rate, once you get a rod that has floated all the way down to the end, like my third rod has here, uh, sometimes I just will pick it up. If there's not a fish on, that's okay. Just toss it back up to the front of the line because it's actually hard for me to see it down there. One reason why I like the blue rods so much is because they are shorter. The line isn't as long, and so it doesn't get as far away. Uh, this rod I have in the first position, it does have a longer reach a longer rod so your uh, the ability to go further down down the river is there and I will typically hold the last one I put in I'll hold because uh, sometimes it's just an immediate bite on that one like that oblique Gudgeon. All right, let's pick up that third rod and let's try something here. This might uh, might increase our our bite rate, but we're gonna try maggots on two on two of the three rods instead of the earthworms. The earthworms seem to be kind of reaching the end of the line without getting bites a little more often than the other two. It's like a dace, right? No, that was a common roach. Okay. That's the... Uh, that actually may be the other species that does pretty good for, at quarry for me. I don't know why I'm blanking on it. I know there's four that I really like to use. And common roach might be the fourth. In just a minute, we'll kind of see how we've done in terms of number of bait fish and... Um, and... Uh, I'll be able to remember for sure that way. All right. I don't, ooh, chub. That's unusual. I don't see chub in this spot. So that was on maggots. Maybe it's because I didn't use maggots yesterday. Maggots are um, one of the baits that will catch chub here pretty well. Oh, it popped back up, didn't it? Let's see if we can get one more here. There we go. It's it's such a good bite rate. That's a bleak. It's such a good bite rate. Like I almost wonder if just having one in, maybe setting up a couple of feeders. Sorry, I'm just kind of thinking out loud here. Maybe setting up a couple of feeders. Uh, and because the feeders will hold them a little bit longer so that if you just have one in with either blood worms or maggots look at it little nibbles it must be it might be a perch or something most of the fish you're catching here are not going to nibble most of them just take it which is nice um, so I don't know I, I, I could see trying some other experiments like having two feeders in and just kind of setting them right there in the water and then having one float you use over and over all right, so let's look and see what we've caught here. In about 10 minutes, 4, 5, 6, 12, 18, 24, 25 fish in, in, uh, in 10 minutes. And you saw I missed a bunch, so there's a lot again. And let's look at our bait fish. I mean, this is what we're here. This isn't really about making silver directly. This is about make, getting fish that you can turn into bait fish. So my favorites at Cory are 
Gudgeon, Ruff, White Bream, and Bleak. And I'm glad I looked at this. So, so Roach are okay too, but it's Gudgeon, Ruff, White Bream, and Bleak are my favorites. And this spot does slow down a little bit at night. And so if you're going to stay overnight in this spot to really go hard into getting maybe two or three days worth of bait fish, filling your inventory up with bait fish, then I think at night I would put, um, uh, I would put feeders in with similar line and, um, and try to catch rough during the night. And you'll get more bait fish, more rough, and you might get lucky and get a donut rough and make a little silver while you're at it. But I think that's what I would I would do if I was going to stay here for multiple days. All right, let's see what we've done here, though. In terms of bleak, wow, five bleak. And see how they're markers? So we're, in fact, there's an order uh, at the cafe. We're passing on an order here just to get these bait fish. But they will pay off at Cory, right? And in just a little while, we're going to start streaming, and we're going to go to Cory and fish from the island and use up all these bait fish. So... Um, it's worth it. Well, you don't have to sit here and watch me make all these bait fish, do you? Let's see. So we had five bleak. We ended up with only five gudgeon. Usually, uh, my experience with using blood worms in a like full daylight time period, uh, I end up with more like 10 or so gudgeon. So I think using the different baits may have affected that. And then just also randomness, randomness. I never have more than one or two perch for bait fish here because the perch though they do bite they don't bite a ton same with roach maybe I sometimes have three or four roach but not too many and then if you stayed later you get the rough and uh, there are white bream here at, um, at at winding obviously that you could catch but you would need to uh, to change your strategy a little bit in terms of catching the white bream but again, I just think if you're trying to get bait fish or if you're trying to level up your float fishing, you have a little bit of silver and you can spend it to put these rigs together. This to me is a really effective and fun. I mean, I, I'm not a huge en enjoyer of float fishing, but because of the bite rate and the type of species you're catching that just don't nibble as long. And it's just some of the frustrations I have with float fishing. You don't necessarily see it here as much as you do in some of the other locations or with the other species so for me this was a pretty cool place to uh to build it. man just missing it twice in a row and it's the only one i'm focused on just trying to catch one more fish here for you guys and So just as a reminder, nice, another bleak. Just as a reminder, this is what the gear looks like. Eight pound fluorocarbon line. Not that you have to use that. I think mono would work, would work fine. I would still use around the same diameter, same size line. We got these used little starter rods. I mean, really, you're not spending much money except for, for me, I've got really nice line. I mean, this is about 90 silver, right, for this one thing of line. We're, we've got zero wear, you know, we've been using it for a while, zero wear. It's going to last you a long time. You're going to get a lot of bait fish off this. I do have a little bit more expensive hooks. The other ones you could use are the happy hooks. Save a little bit of silver, you know. Uh, I'm going all out because I enjoy bait fish, you know, bait fishing. So we got the berserk hooks. I think they work really well. I'm losing a lot less fish than I typically do. And I would recommend bloodworms A, maggots B. 1A blood worms, 1B maggots. Worms work well also. Um, and I have no points in float fishing. So that's the other thing to remember. You know, I've got very little accuracy or control of fish. Um, I don't have any sort of uh, technique increase. So for some of you, you may be able to do this even more efficiently than I can. Anyway, Coordinates are 111, 125. I'm not saying this is the only spot. I'm not even saying this is the best spot. This is a spot, and I have enjoyed this spot. I hope you will as well. And as always, thanks for your support. Thanks for watching, and hope you have a great day.